Hello, and welcome to Subjective Insights. I'm messy Chris today. I like to off have a couple of days when I'm off where I don't wash. I just let my body do what it does. Let it get oily and greasy. <laughs> oily and greasy. Um, anyway, yeah, I've gone... Today I'm going to talk about how... What interests me, like, like in terms of... When I'm thinking about the world and philosophising and stuff... Uh, I'm not really interested in like special powers like telepathy and and telekinesis and pyrokinetics and stuff like that. Um, the way I think really is chuck it, chuck all that stuff in, you know, parallel worlds, fairies, giants, whether they exist or not. Um, just just chuck it all in, all in the cauldron, and then look at what you got then. What what's what's still true? What's true? Uh, whether you have telepathy or not, what's true, whether these mystical, uh, magical things exist or not, you know, what's true, given all the cases, it, it, it's, it's an, an, a kind of seeking for universality, uh, and, and in a sense, the reason why people fixate upon kind of spiritual powers and stuff like that is because they're bored of the status quo, they're bored of no normality, there's this saying, familiarity breathe contempt um you could imagine right that the status quo the normal state of affairs was that we were all telepathic and um we all heard each other's thoughts and then you could imagine somebody within that world thinking to themselves hmm i wish i could communicate through sounds like like i hear the birds doing um that that seems awesome that does that's amazing uh, and 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 to be able to stop other people hearing what you're thinking wow that would be imagine that that would be amazing wouldn't it you know, and you can imagine the birds up there in the sky that they're probably there looking down at us and thinking, "Oh, imagine, imagine being that durable." You know, with me, I've got these thin, fragile bones. I hit into something and they just break. Uh, that person, he just fell over from about ten meters and he's fine. He got up, he just dusted himself off, and he's fine. I wish I had that superpower. I really do. And 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 so. It's it's a bit like what we do in in the normal with the normal state of affairs is we get bored of it so we search for novelty and we go out from the normal and then we we go into the abnormal and then after a while even the abnormal becomes normal like you can imagine Frodo right being bored at home in the Shire right uh, and um, then this opportunity for adventure knocks at his door quite literally in Frodo's case. And um, he's like, yeah, yeah, oh, finally, a break from the monotony. Uh, and, and he goes off on, on these big adventures. And then when he's up in the hills of Mordor, like, dragging that ring along with him, and it's day after day the same tread. He's like, oh, bloody hell, I wish I was back in the Shire. And it's um, and, and, and this, this search for novelty is what kind of drives most people's thinking. It's why they become fixated upon aliens and stuff like that. In my thinking, it's like, I've already kind of assimilated the possibility of aliens being being in there. Like, like say, say if aliens made me, then so what? I mean, where, where did it all still come from? Where did the universe come from? Where did they come from? Um, and, and why did the aliens do it? What 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 would their world have been like? That even even those any answer to that question. At the end of the day, you're still going to be left here as a caring individual. Caring now, I don't mean specifically in the sense of, of of worrying whether somebody's going to be hurt, but but caring in the sense that Heidegger means it when when he says that what distinguishes us is that we care. We care about outcomes, whether negative or positive. And, and so, and it's and it's that care that drives us to kind of move away from to, to go into novelty because we care about novelty we care we get bored and we don't like being bored we care about the boredom yeah and so it's like the free will thing um, the beauty of the arguments that, that I use with free will, like, like, like who you are determines what you choose, is that you can, you can hypothesize any quality of entity for that who you are. You can be a spiritual being, right? You can be a physical material being. You can be whatever, right? 
But as long as you have a character, if it's your character that determines what you are, then that character, it, it can be manifested or represented in any medium. You know, it can be represented in the, in the medium of spiritual, of a spirit, of a material thing. And this is what I like about Alan Watts, because what Alan Watts says is true no matter what the constitution of reality is, in a sense. It's, it just is. And, and now a lot of kind of... Um, the rest in philosophical tradition would dismiss that out of hand. They they would try and say it has no meaning because there are no conditions for it being false. Um, which is then, I mean, but then what the, what that that makes meaningless the most kind of self evident statements we can make that things exist. Uh, and if you, if you ask the question, what is existence? Because it has no condition for being falsified, then um, it, 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 in, in the rest of philosophical tradition, especially the analytical tradition, existence is, is just meaningless. But it encompasses, because it encompasses everything. So, so that, that logistical kind of analytical mindset where you break everything into parts and you try and maintain a kind of ontological or metaphysical significance to those parts that you've broken it into, um, it, it, it can't possibly ever encompass anything because of the cat, what it calls the category of meaning. Bye.